at Studio Potter Journal. Um, and um, uh, I have uh, uh, the honor of uh, introducing uh, Alan Willoughby uh, today for his talk, uh, Convergence of Clay Community and the Environment. Um, I met and know Alan through my work as uh, the editor of the journal. And uh, Alan organized and wrote the introduction to a remembrance of Norm Schulman for the 2016 winter spring issue, followed by a second article um, about a major eco-friendly renovation to the Perkins Art Center, where he was the artistic and executive director for 25 years. Um, it's been a pleasure to work with Alan, uh, and even though I haven't, uh, no, I've only known him for a short time, uh, knowing someone through their writing gives me a direct connection to their thoughts, which makes even a recently established relationship seem like one of many years. Um, Alan has written for several other publications, including Ceram Ceramics Monthly, Ceramics Art and Perception, and Ceramics Technical, all while directing the Perkins Art Center and maintaining his own uh, prolific studio practice. I was actually reading his December 1999 article in Ceramics Monthly, and highlighted a quote that I thought was representative of his direct, simple, and pleasant way of writing, uh, which no doubt reflects his personality and his mindset as an artist. Um, and then I opened his artist statement that he sent me, um, which had the exact quote that I had highlighted from his article <laughs> there at the beginning of his artist statement, and I thought, well, it's, it's meant to be here. Um, so, and, and that quote is, uh, I'm drawn to clay because of its tactile and physical properties. It is a welcome respite from our 20th century world of mechani and at that time it was the 20th century, and his artist statement said 21st century, so, <laughs> um, world of mechanization and super technologies. When I work with clay, there is a connection to something deeper and stronger, more primal. On days when I enter my studio, I leave behind the violence, the pollution, the global warming, and the consumption propagated by our modern day icons, and begin a quest to understand the deeper meanings in life, the connection to all things. Alan has recently retired uh, as the executive director of the Perkins Art Center for the Arts and returned full time to his studio in southern New Jersey. He's rebranded himself as a re emerging ceramic artist and educator. He makes both utilitarian and sculptural work, and for the past 15 years, his work has been fired in a Naboriagama kiln built as a community resource for artists and students in the region. Alan has an MFA in ceramics from Clemson University, has been awarded two artist fellowships by the New Jersey State Council on the Arts. His work has been shown in galleries around the country, and it is, it, excuse me, is in, in many public, public and private collections. It's my pleasure again today to introduce Alan Willoughby and his lecture, um, A Convergence of Clay Community and the Environment. And uh, I would encourage you all to get to know uh, Alan as I have, and as so many others have through his work in the community and in the field of ceramics. So without further ado, welcome Alan. Just test, testing this out. Can you hear me okay? All right. Thank you very much, Eleanor, for that wonderful introduction. And thank everyone here today for um, coming to listen to my presentation. My presentation uh, today is about an innovative arts and education project developed at Perkins Center for the Arts, a community arts center in southern New Jersey. Developed and implemented over the past eight years, these interdisciplinary residencies bring together the ceramics arts, uh, environmental science, and community building. Okay, I gotta start this. Arts and environment residencies focus on water. Water is essential to life, and yet so common and so easily overlooked in its critical role in the environment and our sustainability. Rain gardens capture the water at its source and are an excellent filtration system. Impervious surfaces, including driveways, rooftops, and parking lots, prevent rainwater from percolating into the ground. 
Having nowhere to go, the rain runs off these surfaces carrying fertilizers, pesticides, road salt, grass clippings, sediment, and pet waste into local waterways. Scientific studies have demonstrated that the first inch of rainfall is responsible for the bulk of pollution, pollutants in stormwater runoff. A rain garden is designed to hold this rainfall and gradually filter out these pollutants in the water and return the water to the earth. Rain gardens are about thinking as a part of nature rather than man trying to control nature. First, I'd like to speak just a little bit about Perkins Center for the Arts, artists and education and pro uh, community programs. Have a few examples of that. Um, these are artists in school residencies that were are custom designed for each residency, each school, um, in visual and performing arts. I'm going to show a few slides of clay and mosaic residencies um, because of their connection to clay in this conference and the uh, residencies that evolved out of this. Uh, this first residency is of uh, Beck Middle School. It's a depiction of nature and gardening as a part of suburbia Cherry Hill. The history of uh, Milford, uh, New Jersey at uh, William Allen Middle School. Envisioning a new future in a, the new community of Baldwin's Run in Camden, New Jersey. And uh, this last one is self-portraits of each graduating student at the work group in Camden, New Jersey. A program for young adults who have dropped out of school and returned to study and take the GEDs. Arts and environment residencies grew out of dis discussions of the environment and arts education by staff and teaching artists at Perkins Center. While STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math has been the focus in education, more recent research has expanded to include the essential components of art and design education. STEM has evolved into STEAM, science, technology, engineering, art, and math. A central core to STEAM is the working classroom and interdisciplinary projects. In this slide, I love the concept of tools as an extension of the hand. Uh, I often think in education in terms of the idea that um, how you can gain knowledge through your hands. Um, and I, do th I think it's something that's not really taught in school except as we bring it in through the, the craft medium. And I think that's one of the real potentials for learning that's there in the crafts. Where does the water go from a downspout? from a culvert. In every school we worked at, there were water problems. It was truly amazing. Every school we go to, you find water problems. Uh, in heavy rains, playgrounds were flooded and sidewalks flooded, icing over in the cold weather. Arts and environment residencies are about creating a working classroom environment at the school in which we address a real life problem at the school. This is a slide of a you know, delineation of what a rain garden looks like. Uh, you can just take a look at this and see the, is that better like that? Is that better? Okay, yeah. Um, you know, the water coming down off the roof, going into the rain garden, um, and the different components of it. Here we have students planning at Millbridge Elementary School in Delran. In preparation for an arts and environment school residency, the teacher assigns students research projects to learn about water and rain gardens. This can include the design of a rain garden, location, size, shape, soil testing for percolation rate, and selection of the plants. Is it positioned in a shade area, sunny area? Are the plants going to be planted deep in the basin, at times immersed in water, or are they going to be on the rim of the basin? basin? Typically, an environmentalist knowledgeable in rain gardens was brought in for this part of the project. Uh, in this case, we use wa uh, Rutgers Water Resources uh, and also independent professionals. The ceramic arts component of the residency includes the design, creation, and installation of handmade tiles on concrete benches, 
with students working with ceramic artists. At St. Anthony of Padua School in Camden, teaching artists myself, working with students. This is really a case of uh, the uh, staff member who directed this program talked me into doing a residency because running the Arts Center, I didn't really have a whole lot of time to do it, but uh, because I cared so much about it, I let myself be talked into it and, and truly enjoyed doing it. And, I, and, and on this project, I collaborated with Jessica Lydell, who is here working with the students. After creating their drawings of plants and wildlife in the rain garden, students roll out slab, transfer their drawings to clay slabs, and then cut them out. Here's teaching artist Linda Schusterman showing students how to paint underglazes on their tiles at Millbridge, Millbridge Elementary School in Del Ram. And these are examples of second grade drawings which will be transferred to tiles. On the left here we have this tiles cut out and you know, ready to be um, painted with underglazes as they are uh, on, the, on the right side. Uh, those are painted with underglaze is ready for an application of clear glaze and then will be fired to cone six. And here we have community volunteers applying that final coat of clear glaze to the tiles. A couple close-up examples of fired tiles. Because these benches are going to be positioned out of doors and you know we have at least until recently fairly severe winters in New Jersey um, you know, we really had to uh, spend some time working out the, uh, both the design of the bench and also um, make sure that they're going to work with materials that hold up over time. So um, we for, we're fortunate in our facility in Collingswood to have the room to do the actual um, layout and installing of the tiles on the benches at our facility in Collingswood. So here we have uh, Linda laying out and starting to map out the, the, the tiles and how they'll be placed before they're then applied to the benches. Creating the bullnose tiles and setting the tiles to hold up to the out-of-door requirements of New Jersey weather was done primarily by the artist. Uh, and one of the things I wanted to mention here is we ended up using bullnose for the, the edge of the uh, bench because we found that both for its ability to help the water drain off the bench was going to you know work really well in terms of the uh, holding up over time, um, and also when you sit on the bench, in truth, the fact if you wrap that design around and uh, with the smaller tiles, it can sometimes be a little funny to sit down on it. So it works on for both things. So we've ended up using the bull nose on the edge, and then keeping the handmade tiles on the surface of the bench, and then on the legs. Typically, uh, we'd have a day or two where students came to assist because we wanted them to be involved in the installation process too. Um, we got them here to do, in this case, they're grouting. And they love that, believe me, they love the grouting. I like to call this the um, core values of, of when we move fr from STEM to STEAM. And I'm not going to read these out, but I'll just leave them up there for a second. Uh, these are truly the core values of what STEAM is all about. Okay, now I'm going to go on to, we uh, also did this project in the community. The first series of slides is uh, examples of in, in several different schools that we did the, the combined rain garden and, and, and benches project. This is where we're doing in the community. Basically, it's on a parallel track, but slightly different. And in some ways, you could say it's a little bit more casual because uh, it doesn't have to have the formality of that school structure, um, but equally effective. Perkins Center embraced arts and environment residencies, and having a strong education and community focus, we translated these into a community setting. Our first project became a part of Perkins Center's growth to a second facility in Collingswood, New Jersey. We asked questions, how could the arts and our environmental awareness be a part of expansion and growth to a new community? The adaptive reuse of an existing building was a good start, but what about the water runoff from the roof which flooded the first floor before washing onto the front lot and eventually finding its way into the public stormwater drain? Gradually and working with very limited resources, we developed a plan to address this problem. Working with Karun and Kopf, 
landscape architects from Philadelphia, we designed an eco plaza for the building's front courtyard. The components of the plan included a rain garden, a courtyard area, and a community engagement project. In the courtyard, we used eco pavers. And you can see those on the slide on the right here, if you look, or the image on the right here. Eco pavers have small tabs on their sides, which keep them about a half inch apart, allowing room for the rainwater to filter down into the ground between the pavers. Instead of using sand uh, between the pavers as you would with traditional pavers, you use a, a small sized gravel so that the water can percolate down. In this setting, both the rain garden and the eco pavers keep the water at the point of origin and prevent the water from running off into stormwater drains. Here we have the site on the left prepared and then on the lower right, planning by community members and in the upper right hand corner, it's the, what the rain garden looked like one year later. All right, I love to share this slide. Ever since my involvement with rain gardens, I've been shocked by root structure, something I never really thought about too much before. It really came about by accident when pulling unwanted plants, I don't call them weeds because they're just unwanted plants, at a rain garden site. Um, as we, were, we had our rain garden plants, we were, we were trying to let them get established, and so you know, we'd get some undesirables in there, and we had to pull them up. And it always amazed me the incredible root structure in the matter of S literally several weeks a month and, and how, how deep the roots had already penetrated. Um, and I just couldn't believe it. The idea that there's so much happening below the ground, it's truly mind boggling. And uh, this ultimately helped me understand how it is through both the soil composition and the, selection, the select planting of vegetation that the cleansing and percolation of the water is achieved in a rain garden. To engage community members in the project, we set up clay stations during the Saturday morning Collinswood Farmer's Market and invited market attendees to cre create their handmade tiles. And on the right, volunteers return, returning to paint and glaze tiles. A community volunteer and teaching artist, Alinda Schusterman, again, who along with teaching artist, Jessica Lydell, guided and directed the process, mirrored the in-school residencies. On the left, one of the monolithic uh, cast concrete benches, which I designed in collaboration with uh, John Paolini, a, a concrete fabricator. This design went through several prototypes with our design challenges, including use, weather, durability, stability, and as I mentioned earlier, um, one that would work well with the, uh, the concept of the bullnose tiles on the edge to help with water drainage and comfort. On the left is a close-up of the tile composition on the bench uh, installed on the right at Perkins Center Collingswood. For the final phase of the project, we envisioned a tree for the eco park. However, a living tree would have created too much shade over the rain garden plants. We sought another solution and invited clay and mosaic artists, Paul Serena and Jackie Stacklagakis, to create a tree mur mural for the side of the building directly behind and facing the rain garden. A second series of clay and mosaic station workshops re-engaged farmer market participants and with additional glazing, firing, and on-site installation by Paul and Jackie, we grew a tree for the Eco Plaza. When completed, much as the rainwater is recharged in the rain garden, people are invited to come sit, relax, and recharge themselves. At the completion of each community arts and environment residency, we assess the value in bringing the arts and community participation together to solve an environmental problem. We learned that residencies have had a significant impact on the communities in which they were provided. Members in, of the community in Collinswood and Morristown came out to assist with the building and planning of the rain gardens. Their motivation was both to help their local art center and learn how to create rain garden, arts inspired rain gardens for their own homes. We learned that when you can connect your ideas to current and rel relevant issues, mobilize people, develop strong partnerships, and raise money to support these projects, you have the potential to bring about change 
both internally in how we think and understand things and externally in our impact upon the environment. Which brings me to my closing quote uh, fr uh, from David Orr in Earth and Mind. What is the meaning of water? One might well ask, what does it mean to be human? The answer may be found in our relationship to water, the mother of life. When the waters again run clear and their life is restored, we might see ourselves reflected whole. Thank you very much. We've got plenty of time here. If anybody wants to has questions, I uh, welcome. Uh, one uh, last thing I also want to say is that um, if in the, uh, is it called Crowd Compass? Is that correct? Uh, well, through the, through the NSICA uh, app, there's a way to access information for each of the presenters. And on uh, mine, I will be putting in a file there uh, both of uh, in the organizations that, that you can contact in terms of learning more about rain gardens, and also if you're interested, a reading list. Uh, I'm a ceramic artist, but I've always had a lot of interest in the environment, and for some reason, I, uh, I read a lot of environmental books. And, and I find that they sort of in their own way, they come back and have an impact upon my work in the studio. So um, I brought a list of those, uh, I put a list of those books up on my website. Uh, I'm not on my website, but they're in there as well. Yes, uh, yeah, I probably if you come up to the, the microphone would be good. So I have a question about those unwanted plants, particularly in the eco tiles. Like, did you lay down some kind of barrier to try not to get those unwanted plants to come up through those tiles? I mean, the floor um, bricks. Uh, well, the, um, the rain garden itself is a basin area that is entirely planted with, with plants and vegetation. So it was really as the plants that were selected uh, for the rain garden, and that's where the, uh, you know, the environmental specialists work with us in selecting the plants. Um, they were planted, it takes a while for them to get established. So in the interim, because we didn't, we didn't have a whole lot of mulch or protective cover there, we, we pulled up what I call, I don't like to use the word weed, because weed really just about something growing where you don't want it. Uh, it they probably serve a good purpose in other situations. So I'm not sure I answered that, but. No. <laughs> okay. I'm talking about the walkways. Oh, uh, well, th they have a, you know, why, why the plants don't grow there, you mean? Yeah, what did you do to deter the unwanted plants from growing in the walkways, if anything? Okay, yeah, our, uh, our eco-pavers have a, a foundation of quite a, f like, quite a good-sized layer of uh, crushed concrete or uh, stone kind of thing, depending on what was available. So, uh, they, you know, it's a, like the least because cars could drive on it, it's like two feet deep. Um, but also it's good for allowing, the, the water can go right through that and then get down to the ground below. So we haven't had a problem with plants growing. Inevitably you might have a little bit of problem with that, but um, you know, that's where you know, there is always some care and maintenance involved too, which is an interesting topic actually, because uh, I think on these projects in particular, one of the things was how are they gonna be cared for? Um, because uh, because they are a, they are a living being kind of thing, they really re require that. Uh, and so right now it's pretty much uh, well with every school we went into, uh, we we talked to them about that up front, and they really tried to develop a system where they would have volunteers or you know a combination of volunteers and maintenance would be there to to help with the care. And there's also, you know, there's a lot of pruning, things like that, especially, you know, which is ongoing. Any other questions? All right, well, that's, uh, that's quick. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming today.